What is the difference between a good mother and a godly mother? Ano po ang pinagkaiba ng isang mabuting ina sa makadiyos na ina? Now you can read it there what I have written. I said, good mothers want their children to what? Succeed in life. Now godly mothers want their children to have what? Eternal life. Amen? If you are a good mother, you want your children to succeed in this life. Nais ng isang mabuting ina na ang kanyang mga anak ay magtagumpay sa buhay. But more than being good, if you are a godly mother, you want your children to have eternal life. Nais ng makadyos na ina na ang kanyang mga anak ay magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. To so all mothers in the house of the Lord, I hope that you don't only aspire to be good, but you also aspire to be godly. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Amen. This is our mother, Judy, our mom. She's not with us anymore because she passed away back in 2020. Now, Mama Judy is my biological mother, me and Pastor Lorna's biological mother. But more than that, she is also my spiritual mother. And for all of us five siblings, lima po kaming magkakapatid, si Ate Lorna ang panganay, ako ang bunso. I am sure that we all feel the same way and we all profess that she is our spiritual mother. She was the one who taught us the way to salvation. She was the one who led us to pray the sinner's prayer and guided us towards living a Christian life. So she raised us up not only to attain successful life on earth, but also to have an eternal life in heaven. Glory to God to the life of our mother. Our theme for today is a mother's greatest gift to her children. Ang pinakadakilang regalo na maibibigay ng isang ina sa kanyang mga anak. The message is based on 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 1 to 5. Focusing on verse 5, but I want to read from verse 1. This letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. I have been sent out to tell others about the life he has promised through faith in Christ Jesus. So based on verse 1, who was writing? Paul, the letter is from Apostle Paul. I am writing to Timothy, my dear son. So Paul's letter to Timothy. May God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord give you grace, mercy, and peace. Timothy, I thank God for you. The God I serve with a clear conscience, just as my ancestors did. Night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. I long to see you again, for I remember your tears as we parted. And I will be filled with joy when we are together again. I remember your genuine faith, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice. And I know that same faith continues strong in you. So once again, looking at the background of this text, we can see that Apostle Paul was writing to Timothy, his spiritual son. 
Just as I call a lot of you here anak, which means my child in English, Apostle Paul considers Timothy as his dear son in the faith. And so the letter, in the letter, again he said in verse 5, Anak, Timothy, my dear son, I remember your genuine faith. Because you share that faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and then your mother Eunice. And I know that that same faith continues strong in you. Church, this is a picture of generational inheritance. A passing on of faith from one generation to another. So the genuine faith was first originated from Timothy's grandmother. What's the name of the grandmother? Lois. Was passed down to Timothy's mother. What's the name of the mother? Eunice. And now is passed down and goes to the Apo, which is stay strong in Timothy. So it is a generational inheritance of faith. So Eunice, the mother of Timothy, gave her son the greatest gift that a mother can give her children. Mother Eunice has set up the plot. She orchestrated and organized everything in order for her son to be nurtured in faith, become a son of God, and have eternal life in heaven. And so mothers... And those of you who have mothers and who have wives who are mothers, the greatest gift that a mother could give her children is the gift of passing on her faith. Can we all say faith? Amen. And so what are the elements that are enclosed in this gift? Ano ba ang nilalaman o sinasakop ng regalang ito? As a mother, if you want to pass down the gift of faith to your children and to your descendants, to your apo, apo sa tuhod, apo sa talampakan, there are things that should be wrapped in this gift. And based on the examples of these two women, Grandmother Lois and Mother Eunice, there are three things to include. Are we ready, church? Three things that are packed in this gift. Number one is a mother's testimony. Can we say testimony? So the Bible tells very little about the family of Timothy. Hindi masyadong marami ang kwento tungkol sa pamilya ni Timothy. But if you would read on in the other text, we can see that the father of Timothy was a Greek. Greek. Griego. And we know that Greeks worship many gods and goddesses. Therefore, some Bible scholars say that probably his dad was an unbeliever. But Timothy's grandmother and mother were Jews. So si Timothy mixed. Tatay niya Greek, ang nanay niya Hudyo. So Hudyo, si grandmother Lois and Mother Eunice. They were Jews and they lived in a province called Lystra. Now there was a time in the past, nung hindi pa pinapanganak si Timothy, that Paul went to Lystra, the province of Lois, and preached the gospel there. And one of the women who got saved was Timothy's grandmother, Lois. And so Lois... It's obvious that he did not, she did not keep her faith to herself. Instead, she passed it on to her daughter Eunice. And then Eunice also passed it on to her son, Timothy. Church, what can we learn from here? Many families probably only have their mother as the believer in the family. That was the story of our mother, Judy. 
Mama Judy was the first believer in the barrio. But mothers, even if you are the only person in the family, do not discount your influence, especially to your children. Just like Lois and Eunice, your whole family or your whole household or maybe your whole village can also be saved because of you. And if you want to claim that, claim that say amen. Amen. However, there is an however there. Not because you are saved, hindi porket ligtas ka. It means, it automatically means that your children and household will also be saved. Why? Because notice in verse 5. Again, it says, I remember your genuine faith. The word genuine, some, other, uh, some people pronounce it as genuine. Genuine. Gin <laughs> Naisip mo pa yon. Genuine. The word genuine here makes a whole lot of difference. The faith of these women were genuine. That's why the faith of Timothy was also genuine. What does it mean to be genuine anyway? Genuine means being true and honest and not being fake. Ah, Pakitignan nga yung bling-bling ng katimoy mo kung genuine o fake. <laughs> bling-bling lang. Mas makintab daw ang fake. <laughs> Genuineness has the idea of being hypocrite. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy means being or good in the outside, but actually may tinatagong bulok in the inside. Being genuine means not being pretentious. Walang pagkukunwari. Being genuine is evident. It is obvious. It bears fruit. So ang ina ng tunay na mananampalataya ay may magandang testimonyo lalong-lalo na sa kanyang mga anak. Mothers, we need to have a good testimony in the way we think, good testimony in our speech, good testimony in our actions. Can we I hear an amen? And so when our children see our life testimony, this will cause our faith to be automatically passed on to them. And they will also pattern the same life testimony from us. Kasi po kung hindi tayo mabuting huwaran sa ating mga anak, sa ating mga pag-iisip, sa ating mga salita, at sa ating mga gawa, mahihirapan po nila tayong paniwalaan. At mahihirapan po natin silang hikayatin na manampalataya at magsilbi sa Diyos. It's going to be hard to influence our children to go to church if we ourselves don't go to church. It's going to be hard to tell them to study the Word of God if we ourselves don't study the Word of God. We cannot encourage them to be involved in the ministry if we ourselves are not involved in the ministry. And so all of this have to be seen in our testimony. Amen? Amen. So the first element of gifting faith para maipasa natin ang ating pananampalataya sa ating mga anak, nagsisimula po ito sa ating mga testimonyo. Now the second element of passing on faith is not only the testimony but also a mother's treasure. Matthew 6.21 says, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Kung nasaan daw ang kayamanan mo, naandon ang puso mo. Nasaan ba ang puso ng mga ina? 
The heart of a mother is with her children. Take note, husbands. Once we have children, <laughs> kahit hindi na tayo magtabi sa higaan, <laughs> basta yung anak ko ang katabi ko. <laughs> Ang daming tumatango. No? <laughs> That's true. Mothers, you would agree with me when I say that our heart is with our children. Our prayers are offered to God for our children. Children are the treasures of a mother. She protects them more than she protects the money in her wallet. She provides for them. More than she provides for herself. Isusubo na natin. Ibigay na lang. And so Timothy was obviously a treasure to her, to his mother. And so when we talk about treasure, may kalakip din yan. A treasure of a mother shows a mother's love. And in love, a mother cares for her children. Can I hear an amen? Amen. In love, we take care of our children. Hindi lang humans eh, even the smallest of all animals, we can see that a mother shows its love by feeding her children. Hindi natin matitiis na magutom ang ating mga anak. Sometimes if a child cries, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? Ah, baka gutom. So this is a basic need for survival. And by feeding, this entails, of course, providing them with good nourishment and not with junk. And harmful foods. Now the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Matthew 4:4. 4, 4. Mothers, we need to feed our children not only with physical food, but also with spiritual food. We need to nourish them with the word of God. And so, even if your children are still small, let us read them Bible stories. Let us make them memorize verses. Let us apply the verses to their everyday life experiences. You see, Deuteronomy 6, 6 to 7 says, and you must commit yourselves. It is talking about, this is talking to parents. Sabi nung batas, parents, you must commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about these commands. Talk about the work of God with them when you are at home, when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. Amen? So in love, mothers, we care for our children. We feed them with physical food. But also it's our responsibility to feed them with the word of God. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Now, in love, a mother does not only care for her children, but in love, a mother consoles her children. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng console? Consolation prize. To console, hindi ka winner, pero meron kang consolation prize. Ibig sabihin, may pampalubag loob. Kasi malungkot pag hindi ka winner, di ba? Pero may pampalubag loob naman. So ibig sabihin, to console is to comfort. To console is to encourage. 
to soothe the heart of an aching child. James Dobson said, countless times a mother does what she can do well. What does a mother do? She wipes away a tear. She whispers a word of hope and eases a child's fear. So when a child has a boo-boo or a wound, the best medicine is what? Yan, a mother's hugs and kisses. Mommy, boo-boo. Okay, come anak. Oh, kiss na natin yan. Kiss. It gives the child the assurance that everything will be okay. When a child is troubled with problems in school, problems with friends, with relationships, now even if they're already adults, bigger problems of our adult children like work and finances, what does a mother do? A mother gives a word of hope. A mother gives support. A mother gives upliftment. When a child gets discouraged in his faith, is hurt, sometimes even to the point of blaming God for his misery, a mother uses kind and gentle words to light the fire and passion once again. Amen? Now for us Filipinos, Ewan ko ba kung bakit sa ating mga nanay na mga Pilipino, we can observe that most of us always have a high tone of voice towards our children. Palaging mataas ang tono ng boses natin. Parang palagi tayong galit. No? <laughs> mami! Uh, uh, mami, I have a bubu. Ha? Like, why? What happened? Minsan tayo... Nasaktan na nga, pagagalitan pa natin. No? You're not being careful kasi. But let's learn something from this verse. Proverbs 15 verse 4 says, A gentle tongue is a tree of life. And so to console is to be gentle. And gentleness is a fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Medyo bababaan natin yung tono natin ng konti. No? Para mas gentle yung approach. Amen? Bababa na yun actually. No? Alright. So in love, again, a mother cares. For her children. Second, a mother consoles her children. And also in love, a mother corrects her children. What are the three C's again? Number one is we care. Number two, we console. And number three, correct. We correct our children in love. The Bible says, Hebrews 12, 6, for the Lord himself disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one he accepts as a child. Basic doctrine students, pinag-aralan nyo tong versikulong ito. The Lord is the author of discipline. Therefore, a godly mother will correct and even palo her children, because she loves them. She knows the importance of teaching her children the difference between right and wrong. Did you know that spanking our children is biblical? Proverbs 13, 24. Those who spare the rod of discipline Pag hindi mo daw ginamit ang walis tambo, ano bang ginagamit ninyong pamalo? <laughs> Those who spare, 
Pag wala daw tayong pamalo, tinatago mo yung pamalo, ayaw mong gamitin. Yun alam mo tawag sa atin, ibig sabihin daw, we hate our children. Because those who love their children care enough to discipline them. Kapag hindi daw natin pinapalo ang ating mga anak, ibig sabihin, hindi natin sila mahal. Dahil ang tunay na nagmamahal sa kanyang mga anak ay pumapalo upang madisiplinahan sila. Amen! <laughs> Malu- Pwede daw bang paluin ang asawa? Ang sagot ko doon, maluhin. <laughs> Hindi paluhin. Alright. Church, remember this. In Canada, they're very strict with physical abuse. There is a difference between disciplining, spanking, and physically abusing a child. Alam nyo kung ano yung abuse? Pag nagmarka. Pwede bang pumalo ng walang marka? Yun ang pag-aralan nyo. Dahil pag nagmarka yan, delikado ka. Okay? Now, there's different love languages. Remember my sermon to you about love languages? Some people lo- feel loved, feeling nila na sila ay mahal because of physical affection, physical touch. Children who like to be physically touched, yung hinahag, kinikiss, according to Gary Goldman. Tama ba? Siya yung, yung author? Doc Chap- Chapman. Dr. Gary Chapman, the author of Love Languages. If the love language of your child is physical affection, wag mo daw paluin. Nagets nyo? Pag yung anak mo, gustong gusto niya yung hinahag siya, kinikiss siya, physical affection, do not punish the child with physical punishment. Because mababaliktad, makukontra yung love language niya. Kasi gusto nga niya yung tinatouch, tapos papaluin mo siya. So there's other means of disciplining a child whose love language is physical. Pwedeng pagsabihan instead na palo. Pwedeng rewards and punishment. Tanggalin mo yung gadget. Imbis na paluin. Okay, so hindi naman palaging palo ang form of discipline. All right? Are you learning something, parents? Hindi ibig sabihin na sinabi dyan na pamalo, huwag nating ilimita ang utak natin doon sa walis tambong pamalo lang. Because there are other forms of discipline as well based on the love language of our children. Okay. Now, I will not focus on that any much more. But I want to move on to the next. So the treasure of a mother, we treasure our children so much. We want to show them our love. We love them by caring for them, consoling them, and correcting them. But a treasure of a mother's, a mother does not only show her love, but also show a mother's longing. Mothers, what are you longing for? Ano ba talaga yung dinidesire ng puso mo? Ano ba talaga yung hinihiling mo na sana mangyari? A godly mother has a longing for her children to be saved. Amen. Ninanasa, kinakapanabikan ng isang ina ang kaligtasan ng kanyang mga anak. A mother's prayer are the expressions of her strongest desire and plea to God for her children to be saved. Now, mothers long 
for her children to have healthy bodies. We long for them to look good in the outward appearance. We long that they have a good education, that they will attain successful careers, to have meaningful relationships with friends and loved ones, however. Very sadly, not all mothers long for eternal things that truly matter for their children. Always remember that the things of this world are just but temporary. Amen? Because Mark 8.36 says, The things of this world, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? But then loses his own soul. Ano ang mapapala ng anak mo? Kung ang kinya ang yaman ng mundo, subalit ligtas naman o hindi naman ligtas ang kanyang kaluluwa. Mothers, if you truly treasure your children, long for the salvation of their souls. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon, mga kapatid. Amen. So once again, the first element, if we want to give our faith to our children, is our testimony. And the second element of passing on our faith is our treasure. The third element and the last, a mother's teaching. Can we say teaching? There was a pastor, Reverend Campbell Morgan. He had four sons, apat ang anak niyang lalaki, si Pastor Morgan. And just like him, his four sons became preachers as well. Now, someone came and interviewed one of his sons. Tinanong yung isa sa kanyang mga anak. And the question was, Howard, since your father and four of you sons are all preachers, can I ask you, who do you think is the best preacher in the family? He looked at his father and he looked as, at his brothers but without hesitation, his answer was, the best preacher in the family is no other than mother. Sinanay daw ang pinakamagaling magsermon sa buong pamilya. Hindi yung tatay na preacher, hindi silang apat na preacher, kundi si nanay ang pinakamagaling magsermon. Now, going back to the life of Timothy, we can notice that he was taught the Word of God even from childhood. 2 Timothy 3.15, sabi doon ni Paul sa sulat niya kay Timothy, Timothy, you have been taught the Holy Scriptures from childhood and they have given you the wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. So notice verse that Timothy was taught as a child. Sabi sa NIV translation, Timothy, from infancy, you have been taught the word of God. Mula nung ikaw palang ay sanggol, naturuan ka na ng banal na kasulatan. Mothers, teach your children the word of God even from infancy. Ang dami dito sa inyo, mga infant pa ang mga anak ninyo. It's never too early to, read, to teach them the Word of God. Because we are blessed nowadays dahil ang dami na nating mga gadgets and technology. We have a lot of downloadable videos from YouTube about Bible stories that we can make our, our kids watch. Bible story books are accessible anywhere, especially here in Toronto, public libraries in every corner, in every community. You don't have to buy. Just go and borrow. You can keep them for two weeks. Even if you don't have those means, okay, wala kang gadget, wala kang book, there's always the church. Bring your kids to church at least man lang once a week. May marinig silang Bible stories, maturuan sila ng mga kanta, maturuan silang manalangin. 
Proverbs 22 verse 6 says, Train up a child. Pakibasa mga kapatid. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Ituro sa bata ang daang dapat niyang lakaran. At hanggang sa paglaki, di niya ito malilimutan. Mothers, can I give you a warning? The internet is now the most rampant medium that teaches our children. Do you agree? Ang pinaka sikat na babysitter ay si YouTube. You need to screen what your children are watching. No one else will protect them from the lies, the deceit, and evil thoughts of social media except you. The teacher will not protect them. Pastor cannot protect them. You are there to protect them for whatever, from whatever garbage that will enter their eyes and will enter their ears and their hearts. Practical advice. Mothers, once you hear your child speak a bad word, Ora mismong narinig mong magsalita ng masama ang anak mo, wag mong palalampasin at itotolerate. Dahil pag pinalampas mo at tinolerate mo yon, sigurado uulitin niya. Wag po tayong mag-atubiling itama sila. Do not allow another bad word to be repeated by your child. If you hear them repeat a bad word, what should you do? Increase the intensity of punishment to your children. Ah, hindi umubra sa'yo yung no, don't say that. Anong susunod? Dagdagan mo. Hindi enough yung no. <laughs> Sampal eh. Panlisikan mo ng mata. Don't say that word again. If I hear you say that word again, that's bad. Explain. That is hurtful. Eh ayaw pa rin umubra. Dagdagan mo. Put your hands on the wall. Don't move until you say sorry. That, that is my discipline strategy from Axel since two years old. Gustong kupkupin ni mother-in-law. Kawawa naman, bata yan. Sabi ng asawa ko, Ma! Don't touch. Huwag mo siyang pupuntahan. Umiiyak na si mother. Yung apu ko, kawawa naman. Sabi ng asawa ko, Mama! Ma! Huwag mong pupuntahan. Increase the intensity of your discipline hanggang sa mapuruhan at malaman na malingayan. Sometimes, our mistake is we blame it on, oh, because he sees that in YouTube. Napapanood niya kasi. Or ano pa yung blame natin? Oh, kasi naririnig niya sa mga kaklase niya. Church, we live in a garbage world. It's full of evil things. It is up to us to screen and protect them and correct them and lead them in a straight path. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Palapakan natin ng Panginoon. Glory to God. Now, that is just one example, but you know what I mean. Walang ibang sasaway sa ating mga anak, kundi tayo mismong mga magulang. So I hope I will not hear any child here speak a bad word. If you cannot discipline your child, call me. And I will gladly do it for you. All right. That, that was one consideration. Did you know, church, that when I arrived in Canada, I was a teacher back home. And I had the option to become a teacher here. Mag-aaral din lang ako. Ano bang ititake ko? So siguro teaching. But I got scared with myself. 
Natakot ako, hindi sa mga bata, but natatakot ako na baka sobrang istrikto ko. <laughs> Mapulis ako <laughs> sa pagiging sobrang istrikto. But anyway, at least we become strict to our children. John Wesley, do you know where your name came from? John Wesley is the founder of the Wesleyan Church. Now, the mother of John Wesley is not Rose Tangkirido, but the mother of John Wesley is Susanna Wesley. Okay. Now, Susanna Wesley has rules for raising children. Number one rule niya, sabi ni Susanna Wesley, subdue self-will in a child and thus work together with God to save his soul. Ano ibig sabihin nito? Pigilan daw natin na nasusunod lagi kung ano lang yung gusto ng anak. Self-will. Hindi lahat ng gusto ay masusunod. Mommy, I want ice cream. I don't want to sleep. Mommy, I want to stay in the swimming pool. Limang oras na. No? Hindi lahat ng gusto ay masusunod. Sa halip, hingin ang tulong ng Diyos upang maligtas ang kanyang kaluluwa. Hindi pwedeng mas makapangyarihan ang anak kesa sa magulang. Number two, teach him to pray as soon as he can speak. How young does a child speak? As young as one year old, two years old, yan ang mga normal. As soon as a, a, a child speaks, teach them how to pray. Pray for the food. At least tatlong beses siyang magpe-pray in one day. Jesus, thank you for this food. Bless this food in Jesus' name. Amen. Teach them how to pray at bedtime. At least once a night, merong prayer. Okay. Kahit kung wala kayong alam na prayer, maraming downloadable sa Google. Letter C. Give him nothing he cries for and only what is good for him if he asks for it politely. Huwag mong ibibigay ang isang bagay dahil ito ay kanyang iniiyakan. Lalo na kung nagtatantrums na ko. Huwag mong ibibigay. Kasi ibig sabihin, matatatak sa isip niya, ah, pag umiyak pala ako, pag nagtantrum pala ako, makukuha ko yung gusto ko. Sa halip, ibigay lamang ang kung ano ang mabuti kapag ito ay hiningi ng maayos at magalang na paraan. Amen? Next rule, prevent lying Punish no fault which is freely confessed, but never allow rebellious sinful act to go unnoticed. Pigilan ang pagsisinungaling. Ito, gusto ko itong pangalawa. Huwag parusahan ang pagkakamali na kusang inamin. Pag lumapit sa iyo ang anak, inamin niya yung pagkakamali niya, huwag daw parusahan. Appreciate the honesty so that he will keep on being honest. Pero huwag hayaan ang pagre-rebelde at kasalanan na hindi mapapansin. Pag may mali, pansinin at itama. Letter E, commend and reward good behavior. Purihin at gantimpalahin ang mabuting gawa. And letter F, Strictly observe all promises you have made to your child. Pag nangako ka sa anak mo, sundin mo. Otherwise, lalabas na ikaw ay sinungaling. Church, these are just a few of the practical things 
that we can teach our children. But above all these things, we should base them on the word of God. Amen. At this point in time, before I close, let's take a look at the testimony of Timothy. When Apostle Paul went back to the town of Lystra, he found Timothy following the Lord. In Acts chapter 16, verse 2, sabi doon, Timothy was well spoken of by the brothers and sisters who were in Lystra and Iconium. Timothy had a good testimony. Mataas daw ang pagtingin. Ang ganda ng mga report ng mga tao tungkol kay Timothy. Apostle Paul was well aware that Timothy's good testimony was because of the fact that grandmother Lois had a good testimony and his mother Eunice also had a good testimony. The genuine faith of the grandmother was passed on to the mother and now passed on to the son. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I don't know if you had a good or godly mother. I do not know if your mother was saved or has led you to your salvation. If your mother was your spiritual mother, then worship the Lord with me today because you and I share the same story. On the other hand, if your mother has not led you to Christ, someone else probably did. Still, may God bless the soul of your mother. If she is still alive, pray for her salvation. Perhaps you will be the instrument that God will use to lead your mother to Christ. But overall, church, today, this Mother's Day, the message is for all of you mothers who are here. It is not an accident why you are here today because I believe God wants you to hear this message. Dear fellow mother, you are blessed because God has led you to have faith in Him. You are blessed because you yourself know that you are already saved. Perhaps you are the first generation to become a believer in your family. Now it is your chance to give the greatest gift to your children, to your grandchildren, to pass on the faith that Christ has put in your heart. Pray to the Lord that in love you will be able to care. You will be able to console and you will be able to correct your children in the ways of God. Pray to the Lord that until your last breath hanggang sa ating huling hininga, you will be able to teach your children the ways and thoughts of God. Mothers, meron tayong mga kahinaan. We have our weaknesses. We have our flaws. We are not perfect. Perhaps our lives did not become godly example to our kids. However, church, it is never too late. Let us ask the Lord to help us, teach us, and show us the way so that we may be able to lead our children to Christ. At this point in time, it's time for us to respond to the message of the Lord. It's time for us to come to the altar of the Lord. 